Hi, James here from Adventure Bike Rider outside the Great Hall of the Ragley Estate and I am absolutely delighted to be joined at the Adventure Bike Rider Festival by Ted Simon. Ted, what, what do you make of it so far? Well, it's, um, it, it, it's astonishing. It's an astonishing achievement. I've, I've, I've never seen anything this size in, in England. Um, or in Europe for that matter. There's a lot of people here that actually do do kind of have you as someone whose book they read and inspired them to go and ride. Uh, so much so that I even I even got Ted to take a picture with my dad who, who <laughs> passed me a copy of Jupiter's Travels when I was 14 years old and it just ignited a, a passion for travel. Yeah. And I'm super excited that we've got the Triumph Tiger that you rode around the world in, in is it 1972? You I am left? so pleased that you've got it. It was uh, it's 73. 73. Fact, yeah, and I had it. I had it on the road for four years. Yep. And um, and I've been with it on and off now for um, forty years. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And, uh, and it's usually kept at the, yes. the Coventry Motor Museum, isn't it? And yes. I yes. bit as well as meeting yourself, which is always always a, yeah. a real pleasure. I was a bit starstruck by your bike yeah. when I wandered up here yesterday and saw it. Does it feel for you to be reunited well, with it? You know, people love it. I I think it's an amazing object now when you. When you when you look at it, I mean it's it's so modest yeah. in size, isn't it? You know, it's um, to think that this thing went all that distance and for so many years, and and uh, and and it's you know one of the, I mean one of the first things that you, that that you ought to notice is that there's no fairing at all, right? Yep, um, and. Uh, and, and you wouldn't. No, nobody would do that today. Would take take this bike through all that weather without a fairing. I mean, it would make no sense at all. But at the time, I can remember it never occurred to me. I don't know if it occurred to anybody. No, put, to a, put a fairing screen on, on screen on the front. And about about twenty years after I'd finished, <coughs> I was in New Zealand when this fellow who got me there called John Rains. Um, arranged for me to ride the same bike. He, he managed to get hold of the same old Triumph. After about 20 miles on it, I thought, this is incredible. Um, th without the fairing, the weather was really beating at me. I thought, how on earth, how in God's name could I ever have ridden this bike around the world? It was really strange. But, but it never occurred to us at the time. And, and you know, there was nothing really. There were no, this, this um, leather, Tanya was, I think, the fourth iteration of the same thing. I started out with canvas bags, and they and they caught fire on the pipes. And then, <laughs> and then in Kenya, I managed to get some black leather ones, but but they were much too small. And then I found something else. I can't remember what it was. And then eventually, I got these made by a, a, a saddle maker in Argentina. And they, you well, know, it was. Uh, It was interesting seeing because we've uh, <coughs> been loaned the bike by the Coventry Transport Museum yeah. and we've been treating it with kid gloves. You yes. know, we've been so, so careful with it. And it was great to see you just wander up and rummage through the panniers uh, just <laughs> as if you'd got off it yesterday. Yeah. You know? yeah, <laughs> it was I was great. looking for the frying pan actually, that, I, that I used to have. <laughs> um, so while we're on the, the subject yeah. of the bike, can, can you let us know how you came about riding this this Tiger around the world? Because am I, am I right in remembering that when you decided to do the trip, you didn't have a motorcycle license? Oh, I didn't know anything about motorcycles when I decided <laughs> to, to do it. No, I've, 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 just written, I've just written a book about my life before the magazine, before the, uh, the ride. And, and that's uh, Don't Boil the Canary, isn't and it? Don't Boil yeah. the Canary, yeah. it's called, yes. and, and uh, and the last chapter of it describes the day when I thought I would go around the world. And I, and, <laughs> and, uh, I had up to that point <clears throat> never ridden a bike or, or knew anything about bikes. I just thought that would be a really neat way to do it. And, um, and it all happened after that. So I had to get not only get the support to do the, the trip, but but to find somebody to give me a bike when I actually didn't even have a license to ride one. And uh, I, there was a meeting at the, at the Triumph 
But I got I got I got a Triumph because I thought it ought to be a British bike, you know. Yeah. yeah? And I was being supported by a British newspaper. It was Sunday the time Times. with the Times yeah. you worked for, wasn't it? The Sunday yeah, Times. They yeah. gave me a bit of money. They didn't give me all that much. And and um, and uh, and so I thought it should be a British bike, and the Triumph seemed like the best one. I was advised by people who knew that it was the best one to choose, and. And I remember a meeting at Meriden where, where Doug Heal, who was a famous um, motorcycle e um, engine designer, and we went into all the details of what we should do with this bike, um, and that none of them had the faintest idea that I really didn't know anything about motorcycles <laughs> at all. I Were you just did, nodding, looking, looking license. interested. <laughs> <That's> yeah. <right. laughs> yes. And, and I, I do remember rightly um, that there was a little bit touch and go whether you were going to actually receive the bike. Well, was, it, was, that right? it was getting tricky because the, the because the management, uh, I mean, Triumph, Norton, BSA, they'd all they'd all let the let, let the bike industry down so badly that they were they were really unable to face a competition from you know from Japan and and they wanted to um, shut the f the works down and combine it with BSA in Birmingham I think something like that and and the and the workers at Meriden decided that they weren't going to have it so they <coughs> they actually locked the management out fortunately they only did it two days after I got my bike. Was it was just by the skin of your teeth was inside. I think mine was almost the last bike that came out of that factory. Yeah. Was it? Yeah. And and you you set forth on a journey that at the time you didn't know would turn into a a book that's been read and loved by yeah. by hundreds of thousands, yeah. if not millions. Yeah. Um, but at the time, you know, kind of adventure biking as we call it now, travel by motorcycle wasn't no. really something that people did, no, was nobody, it? Nobody, no, it wasn't anything. People didn't do it. <laughs> so how, how come? How come you decided that it was for you? <coughs> Would you like some water? Well, when you think there about go. it, um, there we go. when you think about it, it's a, it's it, you know, it's just a really good way to do it. It's um, it's kind of natural. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's it's light and it's easy and. Uh, you know, some you've got to get across oceans and things, and you, you don't want a car, you don't want to... Doing it by boat, you wouldn't really see enough people. Flying is just cheating. Um, so, I mean, you know, donkey, I thought of donkeys, I thought of, 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 of horses, I thought of I think bicycles. you told me roller skates once, I think you said to me. <laughs> <laughs> No, I know when uh, you went, you went over. <coughs> you were you were starting this epic trip of a lifetime, and I think you got as far as Egypt and got arrested for being a spy. Is that uh, right? Uh, twice. Twice. <laughs> Tw tw <laughs> I got arrested twice within three hours. Did you ever think this is not for me? Perhaps I shouldn't be on the road. <laughs> no, because because they um, they they treat, treated me so well. You know. Yeah. First, they scared the da the, the daylights out of me. And then, and then they treated me really well, but uh, they thought I was an Israeli spy. Yeah, oh, and I'd completely forgotten there was a war on. I had so many problems of my own. I mean, that was the first time I ever did any motorcycle maintenance in my life. Yeah, and I had to take I had to take the barrel off, and 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 put in a new piston, and recondition the other one. Never having done anything like that in my life <laughs> with a razor blade, I, I had to cut shave aluminium out of the the slots so the piston rings wouldn't get stuck <laughs> and, and and put it all together it took me two days to do a job that normally you'd take a couple of hours on yeah yeah um, but... because i was so scared that something could go wrong at any minute you know i could make a wrong move and there was a war on and there was no way you could possibly get spares or uh, even advice you know yeah and, uh, it was like bomb disposal work. You, know, you, you, you make a move and stand back and wait to see if it's, it's a disaster. See if it works or not.
uh, you, you mentioned there, you know, it's scared with something's going wrong. And I always, I always remember, I think it's the the, the, the earliest pages of Jupiter's travels where, is it you're, you're sat by the side of the road or you break down or you run out of fuel, it's incredibly hot, you take a bit of shade. And, and the thing that strikes me very much from reading the, the, the many times I've read it, is there's kind of a, a an attitude there that what will be will build, be yeah. some it will work out yeah. someone will yeah. help us yeah. or there's no need to yeah. panic there's no you know and I, I get the impression that the further you travelled the more kind of you you in just embrace the world and, and the people in it and yes. and felt that perhaps you know you can't prepare for everything is that the case as time went by absolutely yeah you, and you cannot you can't no. and and and, uh, and all all the the efforts that I made before I started to. To, to have everything I needed to avoid all these imaginary problems that might or might not snake bites and falling <laughs> off rocks and you know <laughs> things like that and and none of, none of it was really of any in, you, use. I mean, the, the world's actually a good place. Yep. And and, uh, and and provided you've got a reasonably good attitude to it and don't talk too much. <laughs> is that the secret to uh, successful <laughs> travel? Is, Don't well, talk too much. What is the secret? <laughs> Top yes, tip from ten. Let other people do the talking. Yeah. Um, um, and you get to know them better, and they're happy doing it. And and you know, but listen, I was I was a different person to anybody who goes around today on a bike. No, nobody had ever seen somebody appear out of the dust yeah. on a motorcycle. I mean, it, it was, uh, and so I was an obvious object of interest. Must be quite exciting and to an see. Object, you. Yeah, excitement, obviously no threat because I was alone and obviously somebody who had some something to tell, some story to tell, some, I, I was bringing something yeah. to, a, to a, a small village perhaps that had never really seen anybody much from anywhere. Yeah. So there were all kinds of things going for me. Yeah. And uh, and I just it took me a few months to stop being scared. Yeah. And I gradually fell into it and 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 it it gave me a it, it gave me a remarkable a, a remarkable opportunity to just be with people without having to worry about how I looked or behaved or anything I could you could just be perfectly natural and um, and and that translated into my being almost clairvoyant about people I could yeah. sort of got got to know them so well because I wasn't I wasn't in, in involved in a transaction with them I was you know, I didn't need anything from them so I could just be just purely who I who I am inside and uh, it made a tremendous difference it actually changed me completely I well, imagine that must change you yeah, for the rest really, of your life really as did, well yes I mean the amount of simple assurance that it gives you you know to be able to survive on that kind of journey and and get accustomed to being able to deal with any any situation that comes to mind. yeah And you mentioned that uh, you turned up with, with stories to tell uh, and people were interested in those. But one thing that strikes me from Jupiter's Travels uh, and, your, and your other books that I've read actually is that just this the sense of curiosity for the world, which I think you might take for granted yeah. because it's just who you are. Yeah. But I think, do you think that that curiosity is what, what gets you on a bike oh, or absolutely. on anything to, to go and explore? It, it, it of kind course. of burns within. Of course. Of yeah. course it is, yeah. And, uh, and I suppose it's an aspect of imagination in general. You know, you, you, ha you have to you have to have enough of an imagination to, to to wonder whether things are what they actually do. What does an elephant actually look like? What, <laughs> what, 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 you know, what, such a simple uh, question. Yeah, but yeah, 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 yeah. Until, until until you actually see one. In, in, in the road alongside you or you know, running after you <laughs> no, it's, it, it, you even today when when you'd be hard put to find anything that there isn't a picture of somewhere you I mean 
on the internet you can find a picture of any pretty much anything you'd ever want to see so does that mean that you know, there's no point in going anywhere to see to see it yeah is, is what's the difference between the picture and the real thing you know? and s somehow you've got to know that the picture does not tell the truth does not really tell a story there's a lot more to it and you can't smell things on pictures either can no, you no no <laughs> what do elephants smell like <laughs> <That's> <laughs> are, they, are they are they pretty pongy i imagine <laughs> Yeah, can be. <laughs> um, and for people um, who haven't read Jupiter's Travels or, or, or your other books, I, I would highly recommend you do because you're a, a, one of the well, one of the finest writers I've ever had the pleasure of, of reading. Uh, and you've got a new book out called Don't Boil the Canary, which is about your life before Jupiter's Travels. Because um, it's, it's sometimes whenever I, 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 I notice that you were in your forties before you went and did yes. the trip, that yeah. we all kind of assumed from the outside defined your life yes. but there was a lifetime before that wasn't it absolutely and, yes. and, and yeah. could you tell us a little bit about, about which people know nothing because they assume that i was sort of sprung re fully fully formed from the womb at the age <laughs> on of one of these 42 on a motorcycle <laughs> uh, so could you tell us a little bit about why you decided <coughs> to, to write write don't boil the canary and and, and yes at, at, yeah at well, this time it so was long mainly after. for that reason that i well the, the, the first the first pro thing was I've got a son and he's got sons yeah and um, and they really don't know anything much about me um, because like most children they're not really very interested in what dad has to tell them about <laughs> <laughs> about what what, I, what did you do in the war dad you know that yeah. kind of thing and and uh, and I thought I would at le at least leave a record because I got I got married and had a, a son quite late in life, in my uh, nearly fifty, yeah. and um, and so I'd had a, a full life before, even before I got on a bike. You know? Yeah, and uh, it seemed to me they ought to know something about it. Well, once I once I'd started putting it down, I I can't help myself. I suppose I, I, I you know I'm a writer, and so it turned into a book. Um, but I, I really had done a lot. I'd, I'd been a, a chemist and I'd been a, a newspaper journalist and an editor and, and I'd restored a, um, an ancient French ruin and yes. stuff like that. Yeah. So there was lots going on. That's it. Yeah. Well, Ted, Ted, it's been an absolute pleasure to have a chat again. I think we've we have we've spoken before, but it's always always been on the phone. We've yes, actually had a proper chat. So, so it's nice to meet you a, too. A delight. Yeah. It really yeah. is. Please, please, yeah. God, it's an honour and a delight to have a chat with you. And thank you very much and for, with this marvellous. Oh, it's beautiful, isn't it? Companion. It's beautiful. Yes. Uh, yeah. Now we've had brilliant sunshine at the ABR Festival the last couple of days, but there is a cloud ahead. So I'm under yeah. strict orders to make sure that Keep this is dry. undercover. Keep yeah. it dry <laughs> if it rains. Um, but Ted, enjoy the rest of your time here. Thank you very much, Thank sir. You, it thanks. really is a thanks pleasure. Yeah, and uh, yeah, yeah, hope to see you again yeah. another time. Yeah. Thank you. Bye-bye.